Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! We're back here for a really short video on the Rysong 812 and I was waiting for the owner of this amp to send me one of those plug-in solid state rectifiers. We were going to play around with how that affects the power transformer temperature and I also was going to play around with the shade feedback resistor values but I decided to go ahead and put this video together after seeing some comments on social media and on some other forums that I don't normally frequent there are clearly some people that don't understand how tube amplifiers work and I thought it was clear that when I was showing the modified on one channel and the stock on the other channel and the improvement, I mean, I thought that was clear. That fixed it. Well, there's some people out there that, again, they don't seem to understand how tube amplifiers work. And they're now saying, oh, she's scared to show us the completed amplifier because she knows it, it doesn't work. It's like, what? So, anyway, I decided to go ahead. I'm going to show you both channels, totally completed amplifier, show you that it's no different than the way it was on one channel that was modified. And we're also going to play around with how changing out these garbage PS vein tubes that they send with this amplifier, how that helps it. So... Let's go ahead and jump into showing the test of the finished modified amp and what changing these tubes out does. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the modified on both channels amplifier and we're using the budget PS vein tubes they throw in for free with this amplifier. And when I first saw this discrepancy between the left and the right channel, I swapped the two output tubes and the discrepancy followed the output tubes. So that's basically just how mismatched or one of these tubes has more distortion than the other on the low end and then the other tube has more distortion in the mid-range and on up. And I was trying to do as little changes to this as possible. The only tube we've changed is the rectifier tube. We got a Gold Lion 5AR4 to get the B plus up. We are going to rerun all of these tests with some JJ EL34Ls with some Gold Lion 12AX7s on the front end. But I think the main thing that you're going to see is the JJEL34s that are a matched pair also improve this amplifier a lot. So anyway, this is showing I me mean, there's nothing wrong with these output transformers. We're not seeing a bunch of distortion when you get down into the lower frequencies, which is what you'll see with you know really bad output transformers. So the next thing you want to look at is the frequency response. And again, this is just showing that got a mismatched pair of tubes. I'm sure they don't match these pairs up when they put these amps together. But it's got a nice flat frequency response. I mean, it rolls off a little bit down here at 20K. But here's a screenshot from the frequency response of the out-of-the-box amplifier. And then here's the screenshot of the modified one. And you can clearly see the difference. The last thing we're going to do is the THD versus power. Going to do it in both channels. And with these mismatched tubes, should be interesting what comes out of this thing. And yeah, kind of was expecting.
They do the same thing. They cross at whatever this is here. They cross at two watts. Then one starts getting more distorted, the other one's less distorted. Same thing we saw on the frequency versus THD. And honestly, trying to come up with like what the real number is here with these two mismatched tubes. You know, which one are you going to pick? But still, either tube, one watt, less than 1%. Two watts, we got one point one and a quarter percent. Three watts, average about one and a half percent. Four watts, should be under two percent on both channels. We were seeing over one percent distortion down here on this out of the box amplifier. So here's the out-of-the-box THD versus power. And here's the modified one. So now I'm going to go grab a couple of different tubes, put them in the amp, and show you what this thing will do with some decent tubes put in it. Okay, here's a screenshot where we have a couple of matched EL34 tubes, JJ's, and some Gold Lion 12AX7s. And while we're seeing just a little bit more distortion down here on the very bottom end, you can see it's perfectly even all the way across. They're almost on top of each other. But again, you can see that the wild variation that we saw with the other tubes in place, we're not seeing them with these JJ tubes. So the next thing we're going to do is do the frequency response. And I'm hoping to see a similar improvement here. And once again, you can see these tubes, the lines are almost on top of each other. You almost can't, they almost just look purple. And I think it picked up a tad bit of low frequency response, maybe a little. I do know that they sound better. I've tried both and enlisting test and the JJ EL34 L's are much cleaner sounding and just sound more musical than those low end PS vein tubes that come with the amp. And I know PS vein does make some nice tubes. These just aren't one of them. So the last thing we want to do is the THD versus power. And you can see how it was just crazy all over the place. Let's see what this match pair of good tubes does. And they're tracking right together. There we go. Got right at 1% at 1 watt. We've got 1.5% at 2 watts. We've got still under 2% at 3 watts. We've, we got just a little over 2% at 4 watts, 5 watts at 2.5, 6 watts at 3, and then this is when it just goes into crazy clipping. So with these good tubes, it's a 6 watt amp, just like it's supposed to be, with the mods done on both channels. And here's the screenshot of the before. And here's the after. And that's all we've got to do here on the audio analyzer suite testing. And let's wrap up this video. Well, hopefully now it's very clear that these mods work when they're done on both channels too. It doesn't make any difference. And hopefully this will end some of the nonsense about me being scared to show what this thing does after it's completely modified because I thought I'd already done that but I guess some people just don't understand this stuff well enough and I saw one comment where the guy was like oh she talks too much I'm not going to watch any more of her videos well you know I can't help it if you got an attention span the you know that like a gnat 
everything's TLDR. You want to, you want to read one paragraph and have the knowledge of all things tube amplifier and audio. But that's not reality, guys. And if you're, like I said, if you've got a, you know, ADD extension span that's this long, I can't help you, you know. I know when I go back through editing my videos, I cut out everything that I feel is redundant. And I'm trying to give people information that they can use, not just for, like, one amplifier, but that they can use for other tube projects in the future. And... I can't help it if you're a fanboy of some brand of amplifier and you don't want to believe that it's junk and it's not what you were sold. I, you know, I got nothing for you. You can continue to be ignorant. You can continue to believe that this thing is some, you know, the equal of a $2,000 amplifier for $500. So anyway... Like I said, I'm not going to log into those forums. I'm not going to argue with those people. They can believe this or not. I really don't care. I've gotten at least two dozen emails of people telling me that they did this mod and it transformed the sound of this amplifier. And they've tried these other mods that they've seen from these experts that they were like, yeah, did basically nothing. And tube rolling's not going to fix this amp. You can put $250 worth of some, you know, holy grail new old stock tubes in this thing, and it's still going to sound like crap. So anyway, for you guys that are appreciative of the work that I did, because I don't even own this amp, and I'm not going to. I did this just for the community. And I hope some of y'all at least are appreciative of the work I did. I know some of you are. And... I, you know, I really am glad to be able to turn this thing into what was really a bad sounding amplifier into something that actually sounds pretty good, especially for the price point. I mean, this is hard to beat for $500. So anyway, if you like the content, please subscribe, please like the video, and we'll see you sometime next year probably first of the year when I play around a little more with this as I get ready to send this back to the person that owns it. So anyway, happy new year and have a nice day.